we are looking at Indian plum, which is also known as oso berry. It was given the name oso berry by Spanish explorers who came to Cascadia and saw bears eating the berry, and oso is the Spanish word for bear. It's one of the very first plants to flower in the springtime, so every February I really eagerly look forward to it. Uh, because it's one of the first to flower, it's an important nectar source for hummingbirds and other pollinators. The flowers are bell-shaped. I think they kind of look like little stars. They're white and they have five petals and they hang in drooping clusters from the branches. The leaves emerge early to take advantage of not having the overstory shade them out. So when they first come up, they're, they stand in this kind of vertical fashion to take advantage of the late winter sun. And then as summer progresses, they kind of droop over like this. They are deciduous, they're lance-shaped, and if you crush them up, they kind of smell like cucumbers. Although Indian plum is one of the very first to flower, it's one of the very last to fruit in the summer. The fruits are about one centimeter long, and they start out a peach color and ripen to a bluish black, and they hang in clusters from the branches. They're edible, but they're not necessarily palatable. They're kind of bitter, and they have a large pit. Uh, they were eaten by indigenous peoples, but it was more often just something maybe you would do casually by grabbing a handful as you're walking through the forest and snacking on them. They were used in starvation times. They might be mixed with other berries and dried for winter use. Some tribes would use them as a feast food, so they'd mix them with oil. Kind of like if you put butter on anything, it tastes good.